Most natural products and phytochemicals are by definition organic compounds. As such, their backbone is built up with carbon and hydrogen atoms to which other elements may attach. As a result, and in general, uh, in organic chemistry, we don't write all the hydrogens and carbons when drawing chemical structures, because these are by the, the default skeleton. This does not mean they do not exist. For example, in figure one, you can see how the molecule of benzene can be de depicted just by lines, thus without explicitly noting the carbon and hydrogen atoms. So carbons and hydrogens linked by single bonds do not confer much function to organic molecules. As we said, we even we, we even don't bother to write sometimes the presence of carbons and hydrogens. It is when we have double or triple bonds and other atoms like we call them heteroatoms, which means in Greek other atoms apart from carbon and hydrogen, uh, namely oxygen and nitrogen. In a specific arrangement, well, it's not only the atoms, they have to be a group of atoms to be a gr functional group, so it's not only one atom. Then they can confer special chemical functionality that means reactivity to the molecule. These functional groups, you need to remember their names and basic properties. And I'm presenting you here a list of the five most important simple functional groups. Uh, although the last one is a little bit more complex. So starting by the hydroxyl, which is when an oxygen is linked to a carbon and a hydrogen, otherwise called alcohols. Then we have the carbonyl, which is when the carbon atoms are double bonded with oxygen. We have the carboxyls, which are acidic functional groups, and is when the carbon is linked by double bond to a oxygen is a carbonyl plus a hydroxyl. So the carboxyl is the combination of the carbonyl plus the hydroxyl. Then the amino group that could be primary, secondary or tertiary depending how to how many carbons is attached. Uh, the nitrogen confers basic uh, properties because it can accept an extra hydrogen on top of the hydrogens you see here noted. And finally, the phenol, which is a combination, like the carbonyl, is a combination of two features. One, the aromatic ring, or sometimes called a ring, and a hydroxyl, an alcohol. In this case, the alcohol is able to donate his hydrogen. And the phenol group is special because uh, suddenly it becomes a weak acid. It's a little bit like a carbonyl, but weakest. There are many more functional groups in phytochemistry and in organic chemistry. And uh, there is an extraordinary uh, visually engaging way to uh, learn them by heart, sorry, we'll have to learn them by heart. If you go to uh, www.compoundchem.com 
or to this page for from the Royal Society of Chemistry, which actually contains the same the same infographics that um, are freely available to all students to download. These are really beautiful and engaging posters that you could print in color and uh, uh, to facilitate your your uh, learning. Well, uh, now what kind of chemical plants synthesize? We are going to, to start our journey on the chemistry of plants. This chemistry is based on organic compounds. So which classes or types of compounds do we have inside the plant or any other living organism for the matter? Well, the first are the primary metabolites. And these are highly well known by almost everybody as they are taught in primary schools. We have a we have a sugars, we have proteins, we have fats, we have nucleic acids, we have vitamins and pigments like chlorophylls. These primary metabolites are absolutely necessary for living. So without any of those, the plant wouldn't be able to survive, to, to, to live. But uh, the plant is making up much more chemicals that are the chemicals that interest us most, that interest phytochemists most. You will see that well, all this part of the plant is green and therefore contains lots of chlorophylls that are necessary for the plant to get energy from the sun. But the flower is bright yellow and this pigment, this yellow pigment, is not absolutely necessary for the plant to live. If it was absent, the flower would be white or green or transparent, but the flower would be a still a functional flower with petals and, and stamens and everything. It would be less attractive, of course, and this is where it comes the presence of secondary metabolites. They're not necessary for the plant to live, but they help a lot in this case to attract pollinators and insects to uh, the flower. Uh, in this case, these yellow substances pigments are phenols, mostly phenols, what we call flavonoids, which are from the Greek yellow. Uh, flavonoids are yellow substances. And they're of phenolic na nature. Phenols because they contain phenol functional groups in their in their chemistry. Alkaloids are those which contain nitrogen and their pins are those that are mostly made without phenols or nitrogens. We're going to understand this bit. You can roughly differentiate secondary metabolites just by the presence of only two functional groups, the amines, which here are in a three-dimensional view, or the phenols. So um, if you are in front of a compound, you just have to ask, do you contain a nitrogen? If the answer is yes, chances are that you are in front of an alkaloid. If the answer is no, then you have to ask, do you contain a phenol? And try to spot this feature in the compound. If the answer is yes, you're in front of a phenolic compound. If it doesn't contain an amine, is what we call a phenolic substance. And if finally the compound fails to have nitrogens or phenols, then chances are that you are in front of a terpene. Let's try to practice this with real natural secondary metabolites. 
let's identify the functional groups in this uh, molecule. This molecule, I anticipate you, is a molecule that almost everyone has in, its, in his or her mouth every day. Maybe at the beginning or at the end, especially. And I will unveil its identity uh, when we identify the functional groups. Well, as you see, carbon and hydrogens, or um, these carbons and hydrogens that we don't write, you have here a mix of we display the carbons and hydrogens, or we just don't and uh, use a simplified notation. These are not functional groups. These are normal inorganic compounds. The only group that we can spot here is the alcohol group. This will confer well, the properties of alcohols to this organic molecule. This organic molecule doesn't have a nitrogen, doesn't have a phenol, therefore must be a terpene, most probably. And yes, it is. It is coming from the well-known mint plant, Menta piperita, and is uh, not other than menthol that is present on in all um, oral hygiene products and many chewing gums to refresh your breath after meals. So chances are that every one of you has this secondary metabolite from plants in your mouth every day to start or to finish. Let's try to find out what kind of secondary metabolite are we in front of now? Well, this is form far more complex. So we will start one by one. Don't panic. So first of all, I don't find any nitrogen in this molecule. Do you? I don't think so. So no nitrogen, no alkaloid. Well, we'll have to find other key functional groups. We have the alcohols here. Many people is uh, very fast in spotting them. They are not at all the same alcohols because the alcohols that are together with an arene conform what we call phenol. And in this case, we have like a phenol times two that many times in books you'll find as catechol. Sorry, we keep some old names to differentiate in between different types of phenol because they're very important for secondary metabolites in plants. But well, therefore, we are in front of a phenolic substance, no doubt. There wasn't any nitrogen, there is a phenol, actually double phenol, is a phenolic substance. What other functional groups do we have here? Well, we have here an ester and we have a carboxylic acid. So this molecule being a phenolic substance is also quite acidic, not only by, because all phenols are acids, but they are weak acids, but because this molecule in particular has a carboxylic acid, which in its own is a, a strong acid as strong as organic acids go. Uh, interestingly enough, these alcohols that are uh, attached to a hexagon, you see there's an hexagon, but this hexagon is not aromatic. Well, these alcohols are what we call plain alcohols or hydroxyls. And actually, this is not an arene. This is just a, a cyclohexane. Um, if you are familiar with uh, biochemistry, this looks like a sugar. And actually, it's an acidic sugar. This molecule, I bet you also have it in your mouth quite often. It is called chlorogenic acid and is high highly, highly present in coffee and also in, in teas. So remember when you drink coffee or tea, 
you having this in your mouth when you brush your teeth afterwards you will have menthol as before how about this one how about this uh, molecule well make pose the first question do you have a nitrogen well yes we have here a tertiary amide amine uh, therefore uh, we are in front of an alkaloid but it also contains an alcohol here and an ester here look that this arene is not is not directly linked to the hydroxyl or to the alcohol there is one and two carbons so this alcohol is not forming a phenol with this arene not at all it's just a hydroxyl lonely one and this funny undulated bone means that this is a bone which can be stereoactive it could be in different conformations especially so we will have probably two two types of this molecule one which is the l stereoisomer and the d stereoisomer so remember to go through your basic concepts of what a uh, stereo center and a stereo isomer ah so this molecule i wish you will never have it in your mouth because it's quite poisonous this alkaloid is named atropine and is from atropa belladonna but no fear because uh, you could have it in your eyes and chances are that when you go to the optician uh, if he needs to explore your retina he will drop some uh, uh, atropine in your eyes so your pupils dilate and the optician can look at your eye uh, much better because the pupil will not get in the way so it's a very useful uh, medicine but it's a poison orally so differently to the other two plant metabolites secondary metabolites this one doesn't go well down orally well i hope you liked this uh, very very brief introduction to encourage you to think that phytochemistry is not complicated i will post uh, more of these um, lessons uh, soon and uh, if you follow them and you in between um, do some independent learning on your own uh, you will become a phytochemist and if you think that this is uh, your cup of tea remember that we run a specific master in natural product discovery so you will be able to bring your phytochemistry to life and to find from plants new medicines new food supplements or new cosmetics if you join us uh, thanks for watching and subscribe if you like it bye Thank you.